show is called Farther Down the Rabbit Hole. This is part two of uh, an article about controlled effects. Perhaps that's another name for directed energy weapons. And what I want to do is read it to you. And then I'm going to interweave it with um, a Tibetan Lama that visited my house so that you have an idea of not only directed energy used as a weapon, but directed energy used as a blessing. The electromagnetic spectrum includes lasers, high-power microwaves, and particle beam weaponry. Non-conventional weapons included loitering micromunitions, micromunitions, it's the first time I've heard that word, variable effects munitions, and environmental energetics. Lasers and high-power microwaves represent the majority of technical research in the directed energy arena, and each has its own set of advantages. Laser weapons are capable of putting a small, very high intensity, very hot spot of light on a target, causing structural damage. High-power microwaves, on the other hand, generally flood targets, target areas with radiation to cause electronic disruption and disruption and destruction. Disruption and destruction. Uh, again, uh, I have a very poorly photocopied article, and I went up to the New York Public Library to get a better copy, and they don't have any hard copies of this Air Force journal from June of 2004. The kindly librarian, fascinated with the whole topic, took me to the website, and it seems as though this article was missing in the archives. And I couldn't even get the website when I came home, so anyway, I explained all that in part one. By varying the output power, both are capable of graduated effects from denial and disruption of operations at low power, and again, you know, really catch the word. What does that mean? Denial and disruption of operations um, at low power to destruction at high power. Does that mean that the people deny certain things of reality? They become rendered passive? Both travel at the speed of, but maybe I'm misinterpreting it, so um, please give me comments and feedback on YouTube. Both travel at the speed of light, so the effects are nearly instantaneous. Particle beams are another form of directed energy. Particle beam weapons accelerate atomic or subatomic particles, such as electrons or protons, to form high-energy beams. These beams of accelerated particles penetrate to the interior of the targets, causing damage or destruction through a combination of ionating, ionizing radiation, shock, and heating. It, I hate it how they use the word target instead of human being. I mean, what else but a human being could go into shock? Obviously, animals, too. In the non-conventional uh, arena, loitering micromunitions, ugh, loitering, loitering micromunitions take advantage of very small-scale combinations of sensing, tagging, and damage mechanisms integrated into units that can be very inconspicuous. Micromunitions will be very small, less than a six-inch wingspan and can be equipped with a suite of cameras and two-way communications. They would have the ability to operate surreptitiously in a particular environment and then be called into action when needed to provide target location information, tag targets of interest, or cause required damage. Another concept is variable effects munitions or dial-in effect weapons. That's what they have in quotes, dial-in effect. These take advantage of ultra-high energy density materials known as nano-explosives or, in the very long term, ant antimatter. Scientists envision variable effects munitions that can accurately deliver an optimal lethality to a broad range of targets. The effects can vary in the type of damage mechanism, that is, blast slash fragment thermal or electromagnetic pulse, as well as the magnitude of the energy deposited on the target so that it will be just enough to defeat the target while minimizing collateral damage. What does that mean? Like they don't catch you with the bodies, the horrible bodies? 
And lastly, environmental energetics looks at the possibility of controlling the forces of nature on a local basis to enable the warfighter to disrupt an adversary's operations. A common non-military example of this is cloud seeding to produce rain. But taking this a step further for military applications might include the initiation of lightning to disrupt communications or destroy electronic systems. For the controlled personnel effects capability, the SNL, that Science and Technology Panel, explored the potential for targeting individuals with non-lethal force from a militarily useful range to make selected adversaries think or act according to our needs. Through the application of non-lethal force, it is possible to physically influence or incapacitate personnel. Advanced technologies could enable the warfighter to remotely create physical sensations such as pressure or temporary or temperature changes. So you give everyone, you know, like like uh, menopausal hot flashes. Hey, you know, been there, done that. I, you know, I certainly don't mean to belittle the horror of, of what I'm reading. A current example of this technology is active denial, a non-lethal counter-personnel millimeter wave system that creates a skin heating sensation to repel an individual or group of people without harm. <sighs> By studying and modeling the human brain and nervous system, the ability to mentally influence or confuse personnel is also possible. Through sensory deception, sensory deception, TV fakery, did those t airplanes just disappear into the buildings? And in that one case live, the airplane came in one side of the building and went out the other. And then they slapped their logo on when they did replays. Through sensory deception, it may be possible to create synthetic images or holograms to confuse an individual's visual sense or, in a similar manner, confuse his senses of sound, taste, touch, or smell. Through cognitive engineering, scientists can develop a better understanding of how an individual's cognitive processes, pattern recognition, visual conditioning, and de different, uh, deference detection, deference, affect his decision-making processes. Once understood, scientists could use these cognitive models to predict a person's behavior under a variety of conditions with the potential to affect an adversary's mission accomplishment via a wide range of personnel effects. As technology has advanced over recent years, most if not all systems are controlled by or include some form of computer or electronic components. Within the dominant remote control capability, the SNL panel investigated the remote manipulation of adversarial electronic systems to control vehicles, sensors, communications, and information systems. In one scenario, the vision is to take control of enemy offensive and defensive military systems, a spacecraft, aircraft, or ground vehicle, and use them to our advantage to either confuse enemy systems so they would be unable to successfully perform their mission or to take control of enemy systems and remotely manipulate them. In another application, the control and manipulation of an adversary's communications and information streams would cause confusion or provide false information. The ability to disrupt or degrade an adversary's computers and information systems could render them inoperable or insert false information which in turn would significantly impair the enemy's ability to communicate. If our military commanders could achieve this dominant remote control capability, all aspects of the enemy's operations in this battlefield could be controlled to our advantage. Within the controlled effects long-term challenge, the s and Science and Technology Panel investigated the ability to tailor and deliver the most appropriate type and amounts of energy onto targets of military significance to create a desired effect. Scientists are currently developing technologies to enable a number of first-generation applications. These include high-energy lasers, high-power microwave, microwaves, micro-air vehicles, and some form of anti-personnel systems. Other, like sensory deception 
and environmental energetics are truly futuristic and require a great deal of research and development for far-term applications. Scientists will have to overcome technological hurdles such as the production and storage of antimatter, the ability to propagate sensory information, or the ability to harness and extract energy from the environment before these science fiction concepts will become reality. The technologies and applications described within the controlled effects long-term challenge will revolutionize the face of military conflict in the coming century. So this, uh, you want to contact Dr. William L. Baker, Chief Scientist, and Dr. Eugene Bednarz, B-E-D-N-A-R-Z, of the Air Force Research Laboratory, Directed Energy Directorate, and Dr. Robert L. Sarakowski, Sarakowski, Chief Scientist of the Air Force uh, Laboratory's Munitions Directorate. They wrote the article. For more information, contact TechConnect at 800-203. 6451 or place a request at http afrl.af.mil slash techcon, T E C H C O N N is in Tech Connect, slash index htm. The reference document is DE0401. And I ran over for my MNN viewers there, but um, there you go. Can you get down oh! Here? <laughs> and I, I received this uh, greeting uh, scarf. Hi, from I'm Paula. <laughs> nice to meet you. My oldest daughter. the and, uh, Okay. Oh wow! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. And, and what's your mm -hmm. name too? Oh, my name is Lauren. And I am the younger brother of Tenzin. Oh, yeah. and this. Oh well, my goodness! <laughs> I don't have enough for it. Tibetan kata. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll come uh, up and um, and we'll sit and talk. I have some okay. uh, fo yeah. old photos to show you. Okay. <laughs> Gee, you're healthy people. Is it okay? Can I park the car over there? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no tickets. <laughs> this is a big one. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very long time, 74. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, well, you're so healthy, though. <laughs> My goodness. Mm. You remember that? Mm -hmm. and, and this, well, there's a letter from you when you went to uh, yes, China. Yes. yes, yes. I have very long time in China, China in Tibet. Uh huh. Now they suddenly come back. Oh. <laughs> Where are you living now? Now uh, I am come from uh, Tibet and then uh, Nepal. Oh, Nepal. Then only few days in India, then uh -huh. come. Oh, my. Maybe you'd like to see that. Yes, uh -huh. in Tibet. It's <laughs> popular family. <laughs> Have you been to Tibet? No, I've never been. Never been? <laughs> never been. Never been? <laughs> never been. But you were born in India? I was born in India. I see. I grew up in India. And I came to the United States two years before. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. Oh, only two years? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, were you I living in Dharamsala? No, I live in... Actually, we are in the same village in Bir. In Bihar? But Bir. It's Bihar. Uh, very close it, to Dharamsala. It's uh, Dharamsala. And Nowadays is I that live. the same address? Yes, Nowadays yes. you live where? <clears throat> I live in Delhi. In Delhi? Yeah. Oh, but now you live in America. Yeah, now I am in Delhi. But before Delhi. 
Yeah, before that. Yeah, yeah. No, I live in Albany. In Albany, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I stayed in a refugee camp in Delhi. Oh. And it was very nice. I can't remember the name. but Yeah. 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 I lived there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I liked it very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Oh. First I thought refugee camp and everybody's going to be, you know, depressed and gloomy, but they were no, happy and it's a, hard it's working. A, and it's a, uh, because it's a, we are refugee in a long time, you know, yeah. since from 1959. There's a little book right. I'm going to give you when you go. Oh, yeah. Um, no, it was, I published it myself. It tells uh, something about uh -huh. uh, the Lama. And I think you sent me this in this picture. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gave this Tonka back to the Nigma Institute. Um, oh. This is what you sent to him? Or oh. to her? Yeah, that's a, a Tonka. And, and this was a, a painting. I don't know if you did. It's yeah, very yeah, little, yeah, so but you must have... Old paintings. <laughs> I did paint. Yeah, oh, this is the chair I think. around the house somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My, what strong people you are to survive! I can't. Yeah. My son was uh, climbing mountains, but my goodness. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, the house is full of. Because I have four children, so many photographs over the years, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I'm going to give you a copy of my book when you mm -hmm. leave. <laughs> Thank you. I wrote the stories, and um, one of them is about the, mm -hmm. my experiences at the Nigma Institute. Mm -hmm. That's that, yeah. the Oh, that was me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's when I went, that's Albany Adult School. I don't think Paula has seen this. I was. Um, I don't know, demonstrate. We were learning every time we learn a new script. Oh, wow. And, um, That's nice to be sharing the cultures. Yeah, well, I thought about you on the other side of the world often. It's good to have I a have friend. Many, <laughs> many old photos in uh, my yeah, house. Sure. <laughs> this well, always with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I found the man who, um, the older man, um, when they told me about uh, the pen pal things, mm -hmm. and I wrote to him and he died. He sent me um, a carpet over there. See that, but... Um, this one? This is from, oh, I, yeah. I forgot his name. Um, mm -hmm. This nice carpet. It was very old one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then later, um, you sent me the...
Of a so lifetime. can you explain? Yeah, this uh, is a tanka of uh, Milarapa. And who's and, Milarapa? Uh, Milarapa is a great saint, yogi, yogi. yogi saint from Tibet. And and yeah. this is stretch and all made from India. Yeah, <laughs> from uh -huh. the monastery. And, and what year did Milarapa live? Oh, <laughs> oh, I don't know if we know, do we? And this is called a tanka. Yeah, this is called a tanka. It's and who is this one here? This one yeah. is called gombo. This is called gombo. It's a protector of Milarapa. Ah. Yeah. And this one? The color is Milarapa. The light you can say is Lama Tendres. Those are the Milarapa's teachers and lamas. Oh, they yeah. That give him the inspiration. Yeah, inspiration and teachers. What What are the names of the teachers? They mean Telopa Seres. This is called Telopa. Telopa. Naropa. Then Dorje Chang. This is Naropa. And this is who? Dorje Chang. Dorje Chang. Dorje Chang. 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 And yeah. this one? Naropa. 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 Yeah. And this is Milarupa. Milarupa. And, and then this one? This then Kores Marpa. This is the yeah. this is called Marpa. Marpa Milar Lama is la. It's a Milas Lama. It's the Marpa. Suma and Gombo this is is. Gombo, the protector of Milarapa. Gombo. Wow. Gombo, Gombo protector. Yeah. And this is Gombo This is this Buddha. Is called, yeah. No, this is not Buddha. This is called Gampupa. Gampupa? Yeah. Wow, it's a beautiful Satanka. <laughs> oh, and then here is oh. Buddha. Yeah, this is Buddha. It's made from Nepal. From Nepal? Yeah. The Shamji and the Shamures, and the Yara, and the Chile. It's displaced like this. When you display. Oh, that's how. Yeah, that's how be. to display. Because the man downstairs has something he needs to. In the yeah. store? Yeah, in his uh, room. Oh. He's, um, we should hang it up. Huh? Yeah, we'll hang it uh, for now. Yeah. Can I have the? Maybe oh, the I'll camera. Have my camera. Let me see. Where is it? Here it is. I charged it up. I use these little simple ones because then I'm sure to get a, a copy. Go see the movie too. Mm -hmm. I have to smile. I want this. Folder. Maybe the brothers would be together. One. This is for <coughs> for all my lady friends to see. Mm -hmm. My friends from the bed. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Angela. You. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> what what is inside? Messages. Inside messages and prayers and, and, prayers and mm -hmm. so many historical uh big lamas. Like Milarepa's clothes mm -hmm. and so many. Oh, oh. like relics. Yeah, relics. Oh. Yeah, relics. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Some oh. relics. Coming right from them. Collected from different lamas, different oh. monasteries. And they put all these pieces together into this. Oh, that's and, yeah, valuable. And this gets more powerful. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, so we should meditate. <coughs> <laughs> Do you want to sit here or here? Maybe it's this okay. is this one's more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Um, and I get the bridge in the back. I put this on YouTube, <laughs> so you can see it on the internet. Yeah. Have a seat, mm -hmm. or wherever you're comfortable. 
Maybe we should cut that tree down. Yeah. Used to see through there. Where are they? <laughs> Who's your hat? It's pretty hot here. We oh. can't stay home. No. Thank you for waiting. <laughs> Long lost yeah. relative. Oh. oh, this is my granddaughter. Oh, yeah. Inside, this is my, <laughs> or you my daughter. <laughs> and very, very good friend, Kim. Oh, yeah. Hi. Oh. Hi. Oh. And Hella. <laughs> That, that's the yeah, brother. Yeah. I have put him. Yeah, nice oh, really? From yes. so long ago. Kept, kept in, yes, before <laughs> Sandra <Saint -Denis>. and yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's a good writer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Kim, for, since I was seven years old, we've known each other many, many years. Uh -huh. yeah. You can go in and have some pie, are you? Yeah. Well, it's nice to meet you. I was yeah. hoping you were trying to get awake and going. Do you remember this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything we have came from Tibet. Oh, oh, yeah. And you better friends. see this wonderful presence in there, too. Oh, wow. <laughs> you have, you have a lot of things to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just just retreat. <laughs> it's worth it to wait. Oh, you know, well, the weather is perfect. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The whole nice. world. Yeah, no fog. <laughs> yes, see, I told you it was warm yesterday. It was so cold. I uh, said, don't you have a blanket? Because in my house we take our shoes off and then everybody's cold. <laughs> <laughs> I can laugh. <laughs> he's his brother. Oh, he is. He's in Albany now. Oh, in Albany. Yeah, I live in Albany. Oh, how long? Uh, Here I am with all my friends. Pardon? Uh, I uh, came here two years ago. I came to from India. And I used to live six or eight months in New York. And after that, I shipped it here in Cal uh, California. <laughs> you miss New York? It's a no. pretty exciting place. <laughs> no. yeah. There's a new movie of Milarepa, that yeah. they said, that well, we're going to see. You know which theater? Yeah, showing in Shattuck. Shattuck? Yeah, Shattuck. What is that? Milarepa is the great a, Tibetan, Tibetan saint. Great yogi. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, we should see it immediately.